Hello, I welcome you to St. John's United Church. This is the fourth Sunday in Advent, and today we light the candle of love. Love, the one of the most important, if not the most important thing in the Christian life. I hope that today you will learn about love in the sermon, and it will help you in your life, and you will grow in faith and love towards one another. Peace be with you. Drop down dew from above, you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a Savior. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm chapter 80, verses 1 to 7 and 17 to 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned above the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors, our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. 
but let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. O God, author of all goodness, who has entrusted us with material possessions and made us stewards of your bounty, accept the offerings which now we present to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 to 16. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look. The young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. Romans chapter 1 verses 1 to 7. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father 
and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means, God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, the day of our Savior's birth draws near. With ever-growing hope, let us pray for the light of Christ to dawn upon the world. For all whose mission is to proclaim the good news, that their words and lives will show everyone Emmanuel, God with us forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have made their home among a new people, that they will be welcomed with hospitality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who volunteer their time to serve the poor and lonely at Christmas, that their generosity will create goodwill that makes a lasting difference. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are preparing for Christmas celebrations and holidays, that they will take time to reflect prayerfully on the mystery of the Word made flesh. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the congregations of Campbellford, and especially for the Campbellford Free Methodist Church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of those who are recently deceased or whose anniversary of death occurs around this time, that they will be enfolded in the loving arms of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Saving God, since the dawn of time you have never ceased to bring all things to life. Help us walk always in the light of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those of you who don't know, my mother and father are ministers, mainly retired but I'm not sure one ever truly retires as a minister. But this part's true. In a sermon one time, my my father talked about his marriage with his wife, my mother, and some of the reasons it was such a good marriage and, and why it lasted so long. One of the things he pointed out was that they took the passage of Paul very seriously, which says in one translation, do not go to bed angry. Do not go to bed angry. My parents vowed to do that in their marriage. Now, as my father said, they didn't sleep for a month or so sometimes, but they kept the promise. Love. We have love between husband and wife. We have love among friends. Love for God. Love for ice cream. Love for sports. Of course, all of these loves, at least I hope this is the case, are not the same type of love. The Greeks were aware of this a long time ago. I've noted in the past that the Greek language has many words to describe different types of love. There is, for example, philia. That's brotherly love. It's where the term Philadelphia comes from. Philia, love, and Delphos city, so the city of brotherly love. There is eros and storge, which Storge is especially related to the love of parents and children. But the love that Paul says is most important, 
The love he describes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that's agape. This is the love that God has for us and the love we are called to have for others. When Paul says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that love that he mentions at the beginning, that's agape. Agape love is more than just a feeling. Indeed, sometimes I think it's quite possible that you can act on agape love and have real no feelings of love at all. You can show love, agape love, to your neighbor, who you like. But you can also show agape love to your enemy, who you may not like. So then what is this agape love? Poets, theologians, philosophers, throughout the ages have tried to define this term, so I am not sure I can do better than them, but I will try anyways. Here is how I would define agape love. It is the love that wants the best for the other. The love that wants the best for the other. God wants the best for us. God desires our well-being. And we are in, in, in return to show this same agape love to God and to others. Now, I tend to repeat this idea of loving ourselves at various times, but I, I think it bears repeating. Remember, Jesus tells us that the greatest command, well, you remember it, don't you? Love the Lord your God. But then he adds that the second greatest command is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Why is the second greatest like the first? St. Augustine tries to show this, but what's interesting is that he begins at the end rather than the beginning. Not with, with love of God, but with love of oneself, the very end of all that phrase. So what does it mean to love yourself? If you love yourself, what, what does that entail? So I'll use myself today since I understand myself, not as well as I should, but certainly better than I understand anyone else. So what does it mean for me to love me? Now, if you're asking that of yourself, you might come up with different answers, but, but I wonder if your answer wouldn't come to, to some sort of variation of what I said above. To, one, to love oneself is to want the best for oneself. If I love me, I want the best for me. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, especially if you're a lifelong Christian, you might be going right now, whoa, isn't that being selfish? And aren't we to get rid of selfishness? Well, here, what's the definition of selfish? To, to be concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. To be concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. And yes, I can give you, and we'll give you a few of them, many verses of scripture that oppose that idea of selfishness. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4 says, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but goes on of course to say where it should be. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 2 to 4, for people will be lovers of self, and that's a bad thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24, let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Now, these are true, but I urge you to see these in the context of the entire gospel message. And one of the principles of biblical interpretation is that the Bible will not contradict itself, since we believe this is the word of God. So that, of course, creates a slight problem, because if we're not to be selfish, yet Jesus says that the second greatest commandment is love your neighbor as you love yourself. And elsewhere, Paul specifically states that no one hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it. He nourishes and tenderly cares for it. By the way, Paul is writing in the context of husbands loving their wives and says just before this, he who loves his wife loves himself. So is my definition of love to, to love oneself is to want the best for oneself wrong because it is selfish or, and someone not like to hear this part, or is it a 
a good biblical understanding of the right way to be, maybe I shouldn't use this word, but I'll use it, to be selfish. See, I'm with Augustine that, that to want the best for oneself is biblically correct. We should want the best for ourselves, And I don't believe it contradicts any of the list of the bad types of selfishness. In fact, the reason I think we can know this is we need to ask that question. What is best for me? And this is where we see that it's like the first commandment. If I really want the best for me, if I really want to get the best this world has to offer, the world as God created it, not as it's presented to us by companies and advertising, if I want that world, that, the best of the world that God created for me, I have to look to the first commandment. The very best thing for me is to love the Lord my God. That is what is best for me. There is no better way to care for yourself than to love your creator with all your heart. If you truly fulfill the first commandment, you have truly loved yourself, for that is what is best for you. And then, because there's a second part, isn't there, to that second commandment, to fully complete the second commandment, you need to want the best for your neighbor or your enemy. If that's what it means to love your neighbor, is you want the best for them. And what is the best for your neighbor? See commandment number one. It is for them to love the Lord their God, their creator and sustainer. Love your neighbor. Desire the very best for them. Agape love is seeking the best for the other, even if at times we don't have a feeling of love. And I think that is why in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul can say that, that though we may do some really good things, if it's not done in love, we are nothing. We can give our money, all our money, we could give it all away to the poor, but if we don't have love, Remember, if, that's, if I've understood it correctly, it means the best for them and mine, it is nothing. You see, we could be giving for the wrong reason, not for their ultimate well-being, not wanting the best for them, but for our image, to make us feel better, to make us look better to the world. If I do these good things like giving to the poor, but if I don't do it for the right reason, with agape love, I am nothing. Agape love is wanting the best for the other and acting for the best of the other. And we can only do that when we do the best for ourselves. And the best for ourselves is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. And that is why I think the second commandment is just like the first. And it is why if you fulfill these two commandments, this is what Jesus says, if you fulfill these two commandments, you have fulfilled all the commandments. Peace be with you.
Go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that Christ has commanded you, and lo, he is with you always, to the close of the age. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 